For this problem, we are given a frame that has a pulley with a mass of 200 kilograms and it is frictionless. Neglecting the weight of the bars, we are tasked to find the reaction at D, C, and A. So to do this, we break down this frame into its individual members and draw its free body diagram and see what we can get. So starting with our first free body diagram, BCD. Notice that we have six unknowns, which means that given that we only have three um, equations of equilibrium, there is not much we can solve here. Therefore, we can proceed with the other member, let's say AC, and see what we can get. So for the free body diagram AC, as shown in this, in this screen, you can see that we expose number AX, AY, CX, and CY, and there is still more unknowns than our available equation. Proceeding with the free body diagram of the pulley at D, you can see that we only have two unknowns, that is dx and dy. Meaning that we can solve for these values by using summation force vertical and horizontal. So taking summation force x equal to zero, this is dx minus 5,000 newtons equal to zero. Solving, we get dx equal to 5,000 newtons. Now taking summation force vertical, we can solve for dy, that is dy minus 200 kilograms. Since this is in terms of mass, we multiply it with the gravitational acceleration of 9.81. And then minus 5,000 newtons equal to zero. Solving for dy, we get this is 5,000 newtons plus 200 times 9.81. we get our reaction for dy, that is 6,962 newtons. Since the result is positive, therefore, our assumption for the direction is correct. Now that we have the value for dx and dy, let's copy this to our other free body diagrams. dx is 5,000. And for dy, that is 6,962. Now for this free body diagram, notice that if we take moments at this point at B, BX, BY, and CX cancels because it has no moment induced at this point, only CY. Therefore, we can solve for CY by taking moments at point P. Now let's take counterclockwise to be positive. So, moment at B, since DY is acting on the counterclockwise direction, this is positive. So 6,900. 62 times the moment arm of 4 plus 2.5, that's 6.5. Minus CY, since it is clockwise, multiplied by the moment arm distance of 4 meters, equal to 0. And we can solve for CY. CY is equal to 11,313.5. 25 <coughs> newtons. Now that we have CY, we can also take moments at C to solve for BY. So taking summation moments at point C equal to zero, this is BY, this is negative because it is acting in the clockwise direction multiply by the moment arm distance of 4 meters plus dy that is 6,962 newtons times 2.5 equal to 0. Solving for dy, we can get four thousand three hundred fifty one point twenty five. Now what is left for us is the horizontal force Px and Cx. Sadly, we cannot solve this yet because if we try to take summation force horizontal, we have two unknowns, just a single equation. So we might as, we might as well proceed with the second free body diagram, 
knowing that we have the forces for cy and dy. Here cy is known, it has a value that we have solved earlier that is 11,313.25. <coughs> now for this free body diagram, notice that we have three unknowns, which means that using our equations of equilibrium, we can directly solve for these three unknowns using the three equations for equilibrium, that is summation force x, y, and moment. So taking summation moment at A, we can solve for Cx. And taking counterclockwise direction has to be positive. So summation moment at A, we have a uniformly distributed load of 7 newtons per meter multiplied by 2 meters and its moment arm distance going from the centroid. This is 1 half of 2, this is 1 meter, plus 0 0.3 meters. So this should be 1.3 meters. And it should be negative because it's going in the clockwise direction. Minus Cy, since it is also going clockwise, it has a moment arm distance of 4 meters. Minus Cx, that is also going in the clockwise direction with a moment arm distance of 2.5. Minus 5,000 times, this is 2.5 plus 0 0.6 or 3.1 meters equal to 0. And since we have Cy, let us substitute its value, that is 11,313.25 newtons. And we can solve for Cx. Here we have Cx equal to 24,308.48. Since we have a negative value, which means that our assumption for its direction is incorrect. So to make this positive, uh, we can adjust the drawing here and make it going to the right, going to the left. And this would affect the other free body diagram of Cx. And because we adjust the drawing, Cx will become positive. Now that we have Cx, we can take summation force horizontal to solve for Ax. This is Ax minus Cx, that is 24,308. 0.48 plus 5,000 newtons equal to zero. So Ax is equal to 19,208.48 newtons. And then taking summation force vertical, we can solve for Ay. We get Ay minus the uniformly distributed load of 7 newtons per meter times 2 meters minus Cy, which has a value of 11,213.25 equal to 0. <coughs> Here, Ay is equal to 11,327.25 newtons. Now that we have the value for Cx, we can solve for the first number, Bx and Vy. So Cx is 24,308.48. To solve for Bx, we take summation force horizontal equal to 0. So Bx minus Cx, 34,208.48 newtons 
minus dx of 5,000 newtons should equal to 0. So Bx can be solved. This is equal to Thirty-nine thousand two hundred eight point forty eight. Now that we have the magnitude of the component of the of the force B, C, and D, we can solve for the overall um, reaction by using the Pythagorean theorem. So to solve for reaction B, we take the square root of B x squared plus B y squared. It is 29.208.48 squared plus by. That is 4,251.25. Therefore, action B is equal to 29,629, although it's not asked for the problem. So let's proceed with solving for the reaction at C. That is Cx squared plus Cy squared. We get our reaction for C that is equal to 20, 26,812.16, and that is letter C. And for the reaction at A, we do the same by getting the square root of the AX squared plus AY squared. We get 22,385. That is letter C. And for action D, we do the same thing. Get the square root of dx squared and dy squared. It is 5,000 squared plus 6,962 squared. We get 8,571. That is letter C.